Hi everyone, um, there's often a lot of confusion about how to break edges, deburr, chamfer in Fusion 360. So I thought I'd just create a quick video, maybe not so quick, but a video to explain which toolpaths do what, how to use them, um, and in which situations uh, they're best. So to give a quick summary, um, oops, we've got um, toolpaths that are capable of chamfering is 2D contour, um, trace, and 2D chamfer. We also have um, deburr now, if you've got the machining extension. Even though it supports three axis, the reason why it's in the machining extension is because it's considered as a whole part strategy, so it kind of falls into the automation side of things. Um, but that's also a really good toolpath for edge breaking, so non-modeled chamfers. Um, so if you've got a sharp edge, we need to edge break. If we've got a model chamfer, we're machining a model chamfer. Um, in this case here, we've also got a 3D surface chamfer. Um, so fairly common. Um, and until Deburr came along, the only way to be able to do 3D um, edge breaks effectively was to model the chamfer and then 3D surface it using something like um, blend or flow, depending on the geometry. Um, so in this case, I'll just quickly see, so I'm not going to go over this because I'm actually going to delete the um, uh, delete this chamfer so that I can show you how to use Deburr. But um, yeah, it just drops down onto the edge and uh, just does two passes to, to clean it up. Um, and that's that's all. So if you know how to use blend, then you'll, um, well, I'll just show you quickly, show you the inputs. So with blend, you have to pick um, the surfaces you want to toolpath, but also the edge chains. Now they have to be, you blend from one chain to the next, um, and they have to be on the edge or the boundary of the, um, collection of uh, faces that you've selected that you want to surface. So here we've got a, um, I've got, sometimes you have to do one group at a time, but in this case it's, it's allowed me to do two groups of faces and two groups of chains. <clears throat> so I'm actually going to suppress that and I'm just going to pause the video and go and get rid of that chamfer. So I'll suppress, yes. Okay, so we're back to <clears throat> where we need to be. All right, so let's start with 2D Contour. With 2D Contour, when you select a supported tool, so a chamfer mill, spot drill, um, center drill, or even a ball mill, then when you go to the Passes tab, you end up with um, a chamfer section that appears, a group that you can enable. Um, now the thing to pay attention to here, uh, well, the key thing to understand with all of these um, 2D toolpaths is that when you select geometry, you're selecting the the bottom height, okay? Because on the heights tab, the bottom height is set to selected contours. Now what that means effectively is that if you want to machine here and up here, then you can machine to two different Z heights in one toolpath, okay? So when it comes to machining a, um, a model chamfer, you pick, to, well, actually let's start with the non-model chamfer. So we want to deburr this edge with 2D contour. Now, um, all we need to do is pick that edge. So the tip of the tool, if we just click OK and then simulate this quickly, I'll turn off my stock and turn on my toolpath, all toolpath, and we'll just jump to here we can see that the tip of the tool goes um, exactly to the um, geometry that we've selected. So default behavior. If we then want to edge break that, we come into the passes tab and um, it's not ideal machining with the very tip of the tool. Spindle um, surface speed is effectively zero. So we need to offset it somewhat. Um, don't necessarily know by how far um, without doing a calculation, but for now I'm just going to type in a 3 mil offset. Uh, let's simulate that again um, and have a look and see where we're at. So we'll have a look from the side here um, and orbit around slightly and we can see that the edge is touching, the edge of the tool is touching the edge we selected. 
So we're not actually machining anything. Um, all that's happened is that it has offset the tool down in the Z, but it's slid it along the selected edge chain um, at the 45 degree angle. So it's, in this case, it's moved down three mils and across three mils. So we actually want to machine something. So if we come back to the contour and now say, well, actually we want to put a quarter of a mil edge break on that. And if we simulate that again, I'm actually going to try and snap it to, yeah, we'll snap it to that there on the quadrant and have a look from this view. We can now see that we're knocking off a um, quarter of a mil. So when we've applied the, um, the chamfer width, all that's happened there is it's, it's pushed the tool straight down along its axis a quarter of a mil resulting in a quarter of a mil edge break. It hasn't offset it out radially again, like it does with tip offset. So now we've got a nice edge break on there. Now what if we repeat the same thing um, for a model chamfer? Um, I'm just gonna, I think I've got a section analysis here. I do. Um, we'll flip it around here and we will duplicate this toolpath and change the edge selection and we'll just pick the bottom edge of the chamfer. Hit OK. Um, and we just want to simulate this now. Hopefully that's on the money. It is, but we can now see that we've got a dramatically bigger um, chamfer being um, removed there now. And that's because the, because the edge is modelled, um, it's actually doubling up the radial offset, sorry, the axial offset. So we're driving it further down the tool axis from this um, selected edge by quarter of a mil. So for modelled chamfers, you need to set the chamfer width to zero and it will match the modelled chamfer width then, assuming that the um, the angle of the tool you're using matches the angle of the chamfer. So if we now have another look at this and simulate, we can now see it's matching the model chamfer perfectly. All right, so now if we want to remove um, or edge break this down here, um, so this will be a model chamfer. And this is a 2D contour um, deeper. And we'll duplicate this and we'll move it down below. And clear out our selections. And this time we're just going to pick that edge loop and that edge loop and click OK. And what happens here is that although we're getting a nice, perfect um, chamfer around the corner. Let's get in here. We've got a perfect quarter of a mil edge break, but when it gets to these part, these lugs here, it's just driving straight through the model geometry. So we obviously need to start and stop the toolpath either side of uh, of this boss. Now that's where um, 2D chamfer comes into play because although it's in the 2D drop down, it's actually a 3D toolpath in the sense that it uses the 3D model to generate the toolpath. Whereas all the other toolpaths in that drop down there, you only use the um, faces and edges you select to generate the toolpath and completely ignores the 3D model. So now if we select those same two edge loops and just click OK, so on the passes tab we've got just uh, actually, I'll just change this to reset to system default. Okay. And we can now see that it is starting and stopping um, clear of that boss. Now we've only got a one mil offset on here, so it's not ideal. Um, it would be good to get down deeper, but to start with, let's just try and um, 
give get it to machine um, an edge just to edge break it so again we'll go 0.25 and then simulate and we'll come around here and we can now see we're getting a nice um, quarter of a mil edge break but it would be great if we could get this a lot closer um, and machine more of this edge so to do that we have to um, drive the tool down <clears throat> along its axis so that the radial um, diameter or the sorry the radial size of the tool um, moves away from this wall so we can get more of the cutting edge closer to this this boss here so to do that um, we need to figure out exactly how far down we need to go um, so that's a known value. Um, we the chamfer clearance of one mil is pretty generous. We should be able to go to point um, one of a mil. Um, our tool should be more than accurate enough to be able to do that. Uh, as in again, assuming that this wall here is fully finished, then that should be good. Um, and then our tip offset. <clears throat> if we go into our expressions, we can start to use a formula. So if we um, go open bracket tool underscore diameter minus tool underscore tip diameter close brackets and divide that by two that gives us the radial size of our cutting edge our angled cutting edge um, and then we want to go minus chamfer width so that will bring the tool back up again a little bit and then um, minus um, 0.1 of a millimeter just to get um, the the shoulder of the tool up and away so we don't throw a burr um, and then click OK that's calculated what the optimum tip offset would be and then if we have a look and simulate this now we can see that we've got the edge of the cutting tool right up against the wall and we've just machined beautiful perfect um, chamfers into our pocket here and with that, and <clears throat> all while avoiding the, the walls so the collision avoidance works above and below the edge selection but critically this although it will work with model chamfers um, you'll often see um, the, the toolpath degrading and uh, a whole heap of retracts occurring it's actually designed to be used on um, sharp edges not to be used on model chamfers so um, and plus you know it's easy enough to use 2d contour um, and you can visually see whether or not you're going to need to avoid any geometry by uh, along an edge chain in this context so just use 2d chamfer for this kind of work and 2d contour for model chamfers um, that don't require any avoidance and that's that so how do we deal with this I've, so i showed you earlier on in the video how a, um, to surface a 3D chamfer but um, for Deber um, it works with um, um, chamfer mills it doesn't work with spot drills so we'll just go get a chamfer mill um, it's a bit odd that it doesn't work with spot drills but yeah there you go um, and all we need to do is uh, instead of saying edges to deburr automatic we go selection and we're going to pick this edge chain now <clears throat> in certain cases it can be um, kind of fussy about the edge chaining um, so in this case it's not automatically chained along the edge that I want so I just have to pick it a second time and pick the opposite end so I've got the start edge and the end edge and it's automatically found the edge in the middle so I click OK um, and I'll just turn off my section analysis here and do another one on the other side And then all we need to do is come to, so we've got edge width 0.2, so let's go with 0.25. And we've got tolerance, unreachable corners, edge shape chamfering, I think there's only clearance values in here. I'm sure there are somewhere. Anyway, um, cut the tip the tool so we can, yeah, so we can get it to adjust edge width, constant width, that'll do and go okay yep. so now we get a nice if we simulate this one it's not coming up all the way up the edge 
So we need to, uh, there we go. Um, that's going to help. And machine boundary none. Clearance uh, your automatic, that's fine. Tolerance is tight. Chamfering. Now you can use a ball mill here as well. Um, go OK. Yep, so that's client. So let's just change the tool to a ball mill. I think we'll get it tighter then. And we'll go with. can see it just knocking the edge off does a great job and so that that's uh, the ideal way these days if you've got the machine extension to machine or to deeper a 3d edge so yeah um, that was a 16 minute video so hopefully you uh, managed to stay with it all the way through but just to summarize um, we've got 2D chamfer can be used on um, non-modeled edges. You just have to specify the chamfer width that you want to, to machine onto it. And modeled chamfers, you, again, you select the bottom edge of the chamfer um, and you don't specify a chamfer width. Um, otherwise you end up with the modeled chamfer size plus whatever value you enter in. So your chamfers will be too big. 2D chamfer is used on non-modeled ed edges, so sharp edges, and um, you can use it to avoid geometry, so it will trim the toolpath um, to avoid collisions. And then Deba can, can be used on um, prismatic um, planar geometry as well, um, but it works really well on 3D, um, for 3D edge breaking. With a lollipop tool, you can also get it to do um, edge break undercuts here as well. Hopefully that was uh, helpful and um, enjoy the rest of your day. Cheers. Bye.